you sleep? I, I mean, I was out. I was out like a trout. Yeah, that's the nicest hotel room I've ever How stayed nice in. Is this I think. Hotel? <laughs> it's, <laughs> I know. Like, it's like Loki wanted to stay here the whole time. I know. Shouldn't have left the airport. God. Can I What's tell? Up, babe? Here we go. Lucas in the wild. Yep. Nice. <laughs> I'm just saying that's the nicest hotel room I think I've ever stayed in. That was a nice hotel. So See. Nice. Yeah. The first night, maybe not okay, so much. I get it <laughs> that was a nice, and it was, was yours huge? Huge. I had like a corner window, I yeah. said all night time yep. lapse. So I was like, this is. Oh, that's sick. That's gonna be dope. Hotel. We gotta leave probably at 8.45. 8.40. Right, 8.40. Okay. We have 20 minutes, that's perfect. Yeah, so we can sit down, breakfast, copy footage. Let's do it. Pretty sick trip, I, I thought, if nobody could fly. A question that some people have was like, who was the trip for? Like, what were we doing? Yeah. Or why was, why were we there? Yeah, good questions. So the trip, as I understand it, is organized by CMH, Heli Skiing. And typically CMH always does, it's like you have to buy a three day package or a seven day package. It's prohibitively expensive for any average person to actually right. do it. And so this was their first operation that they've opened up single day heli skiing opportunities. And so the whole trip, it's kind of like a marketing trip. Uh, there were some press people. There was a guy that writes for New Schoolers, Ski Magazine, um, and it was called like the CMH family trip. And so they organized this whole thing to kind of show as a typical skier snowboarder, probably in the, the upper high end of what they're spending because you're going heli skiing um, rather than flying to Canada and doing using your icon pass to go to Banff you know Sunshine Revelstoke you could do all those but you could also fit in like one day of heli skiing right. in the middle of it so it was kind of like let's show you what you could do as like an average consumer that is going to go it's like basically just opening up like a lower tier of availability for heli skiing kind of like opening that door and then obviously you know if you get your first taste of heli skiing you're gonna be a repeat customer and maybe say like maybe we want to go more than one day um so that's what it was intended to do sadly with a one-day window there's always the chance of clouds and right. obviously bc you never really know what you're gonna get so sadly we got skunked um but I think we still had a great time. We had an epic crew here. There were a couple of athletes from some friends of Icon Pass. We had uh, one of the local athletes to kind of show everybody around. So that's that's the way that I understand this entire situation. I had a great time. Um, I was a little bummed just because I think having you out here, I really wanted to like really focus on a full day of shooting. And I felt like we were always kind of like a little behind and running around and trying to find what we were trying to do yeah. and like figure out the mountains and it's hard to like get content on a single day at a single mountain trying to figure it out at the same time and the powder panic is real. Um, <clears throat> I would say through my years of history with doing shoots and stuff, heli skiing and cat skiing is by far and away the best way to get good content because you're not dealing with the powder panic right. and you know you can just slow everything down you can take a deep breath and and that's why it's so expensive it's like it's it's the holy grail of skiing. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, mean, I i felt the same way like the first day we we had a kind of limited time tough conditions and then the whole second day is like the whole day was shot and we had literally an hour to ski kicking horse yeah. and then revelstoke was the powder panic waiting for a rope drop and I think sometimes when you have athletes like the local and, and those guys who are really there to just hammer out and ski, it's like always find that balance between setting up shots and being a filmer. It's like, well, wait a second, they're just out doing laps, yeah. but if we could just take even another minute or two to set this up or do that, like, yeah, that's been something. That's why I that's why I like skiing alone when I'm trying to make like a video oh, because it's just me easier for yeah. me to do it that way. Yeah, I. I always feel the guilt of like holding people up yeah and so I think having 
just being able to ski alone and be like, okay, now I can finally like take the 20 minutes at the top of the run, right. set up cameras, do an intro monologue, whatever it is. Um, I don't feel that pressure of like trying to go, 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 uh, which is why it's great riding with you. But I, I definitely wish that we could have done that heli experience yeah. because I think it would have been really cool to just slow down and get really amazing content. But you know, you deal with what you get. Yeah. And I think we had an amazing time. I think we'll have to do a little rebate trip at some point. I know. <laughs> yeah. I think we still made the most of it. And yeah. For me, just the whole experience was was insane. Yeah. Getting shuttle, staying in hotels, <laughs> like that's all all new to me. Yeah. So. Yeah. But uh, I mean, thanks for thanks for inviting me, dude. It was it was the sickest yeah. thing ever, and I honestly to keep reminding myself like I'm on a trip with Abe Kiss. Yeah. It's like it was not so. Yeah, no, super grateful. Is, it was awesome having you. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah. Safe flight. Break. Here we go. Time to get on the plane. <laughs> So this is going to be a uh, little bit on how how to pack or how not to pack a uh, ski bag. And just remember, there's always more than one way to get to San Francisco, meaning there's more than one way to do things in life. This is the way I packed mine. Um, the bag is overweight, so take that into consideration. But I just wanted to check one bag because I was just, I figured if you, the more bags you check, the higher frequency you might have that they lose a bag. So rather than checking a boot bag and a ski bag, which I'm sure most of you guys do, I just threw everything into one bag. I don't think I've ever traveled with ski gear before, so this was very new to me, but I think I found something that worked. This is a Dakin bag. And I have a pair of 116 JJs in here and a pair of 121 White Walkers. First thing I'm gonna do is obviously get the skis in here. Um, I'm putting the big white walkers on the bottom, just right on their base here. The only thing with this method here is that you need a way to hold your brakes out. You need a, ah, shit that hurt. You need a way to hold your brakes up. So luckily I have two big rubber bands that I got from when I had my skis mounted, but you need to uh, keep the brakes up so they're not dragging and get damaged. So I have a big rubber band, which I'll show you guys. And then I'm going to take the JJ's. Again, you can see the rubber band that's... You got to kind of finagle it a little bit, but it just kind of get the brakes up enough. And then I'm going to be laying these bindings in on either side. So it's kind of creating this almost rectangle that's pretty protected. The bindings are facing in, and I'm also alternating the skis so the bindings aren't clashing with each other. They just fit a little bit better that way. Same with this guy. Again, face it in. So that way you don't have much to worry about. This is honestly the bulk of it all is right here. So now you can see we got the white walkers in there. Nice big rubber band holding the brakes up. Then I have the JJ's alternated. So the heel piece is where the toe piece is. So they fit nicely. And then these binding, these brakes are also pulled up. Um, you're not going to hurt the brake or anything like that. And again, I have a short flight, so it's just for a few hours. But this way, the brake isn't poking out in risk of getting damaged. So now I kind of have this really nice corral um, to put ski boots and then basically throw everything else in here. So I don't, if you weren't taking ski boots with you, I think you could just lay them normally side by side. But with that, I was not able to fit the ski boots. So this is a nice little pocket that I can put the ski boots. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is actually throw my poles in. Anything else that's kind of longer shape like that. I will also put things like my Narwhal GoPro mount. Again, that's kind of longer shape. And then my very long GoPro selfie stick. And then from there, I'm gonna throw my boots in, which are still wet from yesterday, which is actually disgusting. So this is pretty simple. This is just kind of like, you know, alternating, put one right up there towards the binding and this one there. So that's why this setup is pretty nice because I can fit these nicely at the bottom of the bag there. And now really at this point, it's just a matter of stuffing suits, layers, gaiters, socks in, uh, in the rest of the bag. So, and we will shove her down. Probably shouldn't put that there, but you know what? Suit number two. Yeah. 
You don't gotta be shy about this part. This part you just let her rip. And then this one, I might just say, you know what, this spot looks good there. And then it's literally like gator number one, gator number two. Sweet little Lake Louise gator that I got. Oh, lenses. Get a nice hard case for them. I carry like four lenses in me, you only use one because it was so freaking gnarly out. Um, that can go somewhere in here. Uh, ski socks. Yep, this can just kind of get tucked in there. More ski socks. I brought three pairs of ski socks. I guess I just was like, I'm going to put all of my ski stuff in here other than my helmet. And so if I lose one thing, I lose it all. So kind of like an all or nothing type of guy. Shoes. I brought sneakers just in case, which I did end up using. But these I'm just going to shove up here as well. The only thing I didn't put in here that's skiing related is my helmet because I just didn't think it fit very well. So I just put that in my suitcase. And now we try to close it, which... So honestly, you can fit a lot of stuff in here. Um, we'll start here. Give a little hoosie what's it. Start up here. You know, like I said, you don't gotta be bashful about this. There's, uh, at the end of the day, we're just getting our ski stuff from point A to point B. There we go. We are in probably about 65 pounds again. So definitely overweight. So yeah, you don't have to do it this way, but now I can fit everything. And it's nice and like, I just like how it's barely protected. Like you have the bases of the JJ's here, then kind of just soft clothes up here. So boots down here. So no matter kind of however they throw it, it's gonna be pretty safe. So, and that's how you pack or how not to pack a ski bag. Just because this is the nicest hotel room that I've ever stayed in here is a very quick little mini tour, um, really just for my own sake, so I can remember how dope of a hotel room this is. Don't mind the messy bed, but you know, you come in, you got a nice king size bed. Usually it's a double queen setup, king size bed. You got like really nice lights, all these outlets, which is so huge. Um, little reading lights as well. Then you come over here, you have like a whole desk area, nice TV, didn't really use it. Um, but again, nice outlets, little coffee maker, made some coffee. You come over here, you have this amazing little sitting area, like not the best view, but honestly, the fact that you even have a view and that you can kind of see what's going on is pretty freaking sweet. You can see all the way out there, a bunch of cars, see people come into the, uh, the airport. So that's pretty dope. Nice little addition, really good window light. I don't think I've ever been into a bathroom where it's like you could shower here or because the way the floor works, you could even shower like right here. It's like I was showered this morning, I felt so exposed, it didn't even matter. Thank you, CMH, for the lovely room at the Calgary airport. Probably the biggest thing of my whole traveling is this entire backpack here that I bring with me is just filled with camera gear. So that's kind of a bag that I feel like not a lot of people will have with them and you know, it's part of the game. So I should probably leave because it's 1130 and checkout is at noon. And knowing me, it would probably, uh, I, I would be the one to be late to my flight after being at the airport for like already over 12 hours. So I've just had so much fun in this hotel room. It's like, I don't want, really want to leave. Let's go check in, bring all these bags down and go from there. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so we're just gonna take this over to the fragile oversize. Underweight 
to the point where we almost had to take stuff out. We almost couldn't even bring the bag. We were 31 kilos, you can only be 32, but we made it. We'll be back north of the border here soon, but for now, sick trip, returning to Salt Lake. Thank you. When planes are full, I always go a group early because one, I don't think they even ever check, but two, it just makes it so you know you're gonna get some overhead space. I was main group three, I went with two. Just kind of my little, my little hack. Sometimes we'll even go with one. We didn't even leave. Look at Loons, so freaking gorgeous. Just sitting here looking like a damn snack. Let's go Loons. I miss Loons so much. I'm gonna walk around making sure she's all right. Let's go. So you break and stones will break. We have made it back to Utah. Pretty chill travel day. Calgary to Salt Lake flight is like the perfect length for a flight. Super easy, no problems at all. I got my ski bag right away, like through customs very easily at Calgary. I'm gonna sign the vlog off here. Lots of cool things still coming up. So what an incredible trip. Probably never get over what I just experienced. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the ride, the whole thing. I try to do my best kind of putting it all together um, while also, you know, not slowing down the group, enjoying what was actually going on, but also making sure you guys were right along there with me. So thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next episode. Take it easy, fam.